Greetings, everyone. Uh, special guest today, Mike Narichlo from Mike Online. Thanks, John. Hey, my pleasure. Pleasure That's... to hang out here with you. Ah, it's going to be fun. I'm, right looking for, I'm looking forward to so it. So for those of you out there, quick plug for myself. I'm the dude who sits in the garage and talks about wine because I love it. So mnonline.ca. But it's a pleasure to hang out here with John at Marquis Wine Cellar. Ah, it's, it's great to hang out with Mike. You know what I like about is, how old are you, 26, 27? 27, yeah. I mean... You're getting into wine. You're, you're at a young age, and you got such enthusiasm about it. And uh, we need more of that. Awesome. So, and and when I started, there was no you know no videos, no fax machines, no email. So I mean, spreading the word to younger people. It's it, I mean I love it. It's great. But let's talk about BC. Yeah, let's for talk, sure. about talk about BC. BC. Well, BC, it's our backyard, right? It's right around the corner from us, three hours away up the street, yep. and locally too. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, boy, a lot. I mean, I guess I'm one of the old timers, so I guess I should start. <laughs> well, first. you've been around since BC was making garbage, and now we're making good wine. Yeah, we're making way way better <laughs> wine. I think I think I maybe 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 mentioned this before, but the catalyst was. The ratification of the NAFTA and free trade, mm, GATT yeah. free trade agreements. Yeah. So they had to pull out all the crappy vines mm -hmm. that they were just paid by, you know, paid by the ton, and yep. you know, swill in a bottle. Uh, I remember people coming. It's, it's good for BC. Yeah, you know, a lot of these a, yeah. hardy hybrids we had growing here, things like that, could suck up our climate and try to make it work. Ah, uh, well, it didn't work. Yeah. It did not very good. So what now? 25 years later, how many yeah. wineries? Almost 200. I mean, they got yeah, two, just 200 and several, quite a few on the docket still that are trying to open up and licenses pouring out. And uh, it's it's crazy, but yeah. that's that to me. That's how long it takes in the wine. But 20 years is a blink of an eye. Oh, it's we're an infant still. BC is an infant still. We've yeah. got so much learning, so much growing to do. But it's really neat to see where we're at already. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Now let's talk about the most recent launch we were at on Friday. That's that's super cool. Super cool. Okanagan Crush Pad. Bad. Okanagan Crush Pad. They're setting up in Oliver, right? Uh, no, 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 no. It's in uh, uh, Summerland. That's Summerland. where Chris is Summer, Sorry, sorry. It's Summerland. Yeah. yeah. So let's. here's what Okanagan Crush Pad is. Here's the, to set up a winery is big bucks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not The land, is yes, is expensive. It's building the building. Yeah. It's the equipment. It's the barrels. I mean... It's all the logistics behind it. More or less. One French barrel... Mm -hmm. Is nine hundred to a thousand dollars. Oh, and that's a low end French barrel. You can be up in fifteen, yeah, sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah, stainless steel tank. Yeah, twenty grand. Mm -hmm. So what Okanagan Crush Pad is is it's kind of like what the uh, kind of a model. It's it's a, like a co op basically. Yeah, yeah, high end co op. Oh, high, and they're, high. Yeah, they're they're a really experienced group of people. So. So for any of you out there, don't look at it like a co-op. They're an experienced group of people who are really enthusiastic, passionate about wine, and they want to take on a high-end client yep. and help them produce their wines. Exactly. BC, here, here's the key. BC will never be a low-cost alternative No, we'll never be Argentina, wine. Chile, anything like that. Labor cost. Yeah. I mean, we got, look at how beautiful it is. So you're fighting yeah. with some guy that wants to maybe put a million-dollar house or mm -hmm. some grapes. So, you know, if you have the money, you can put the grapes. It's you a retirement don't, area, yeah. Yeah, the house yeah. is going to go there. So who's behind it? Chris Coletta. Yep, exactly. Whom I've known for, oh, 25, 26 years. Yep. Uh, probably one of the brightest uh, uh, people. A in brilliant the, marketing agent yep. in the wine world. Yep. David Schofield. Yep. Used to be the buyer for the liquor board. Mm -hmm. Now is uh, working for Trialto Group. Yeah. Uh, Michael Barche. Michael Barche, winemaker, well-known winemaker. Probably locally. one of the better winemakers. Absolutely. Top winemaker. One of the nicest guys, too. Yeah. Definitely one of the uh, nicest guys. Chris's husband, Steve. Yeah. He's been in the construction business for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, architectural fees and all that stuff. Get yeah. Kept. But the, one of the keys is the Italian factor. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alberto Antonini. Antonini. Yeah, consulting for them. He's what flying in here four, four times, time, four, four times, times a year. year. Yeah, this guy. So, uh, you've got a team that really combined experience. They've got over a hundred years combined experience. Well over a hundred yeah, years. They're rocking. I think David's over a hundred. <laughs> Sorry, David. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um, and so you have Alberto Antonini who consults all around the world. Yep. You have David who's tasted all around the world. Chris Coletta, who's marketed wines, worked for the BC Wine Institute, brilliant mind. Michael Barche, I mean, that, that, that is, you know, it's the dream That's team. That's a dream team, exactly. They should all have capes and superhero masks on, is what they should be doing. Oh, their helmets and, <laughs> yeah. get, you know, Fleur and, anyway. There you go, whatever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So now, they planted Pinot Gris, mm -hmm. but the right clone, <clears throat> clone exactly. 52. Yeah. Last year was the first vintage. Yeah. This is being made at their, yes, yeah, so this the, is their Haywire label. The Haywire label, yep. sorry. Uh, and, uh, oh, you know what? I've got ahead of myself. You talk about the tanks, the, the tanks, the tanks. This, this is was cool. super cool. We were at a release party for this other day, so we're pretty excited about this. 
this group of people is they're forward thinkers, and what they're doing, and this is being used all around the world already, but we're seeing we haven't seen it in BC yet because we're, we're we're not behind. quite we're they're behind not there yet. We're behind there, but an old school way of making wine. Two thousand years. Yeah, forever basically. Yeah. It's basically just poured concrete tanks on the ground that Ma and Pa would crush yeah. grapes in and do yeah. fermentations in. Concrete is a great facilitator for yeast for climate for making wine. Yep. Yeah. What they've created now are these giant egg-shaped sa- egg concrete tanks that have the proper cooling sleeves and everything in them as well. Yeah. So you're still manipulating the concrete vats on the ground, but in a tank. So it's much more space-friendly, cleaner setup, good for a winery. And um, yeah, they're bringing them here in BC. Yep. Slightly more costly than stainless until you get the bigger sizes, then they become cheaper than stainless. And um, much more, in my mind, romantic than stainless, less clinical. Um, easier to take care of, yep. more natural. Uh, it's you know based on an amphora which the Romans used yeah. like, uh, a little while ago. A little while ago. Uh, yeah. And you know concrete as a general rule is still used in the south of France. It's mm-hmm. still used in the Rhone Valley. We in North America always want new, new, new. And sometimes you kind of got to go back. Yeah. To look in the future. Yeah. And that's what they've done. And we tasted the and the the rosé. The rosé and yeah. the the pink. Great, great cool. wines. Excellent wines. Anyway, uh, it's exciting. Haywire. Yeah. What else is going on? Yeah, in BC. Yeah, we're going on about haywire. Anyway, here. let's talk about yeah, what else. Yeah. About laughing stock. Laughing hot. stock. That's another hot one. They're yeah. doing really well. Coming around the corner, David and Cynthia. Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Painted Rock. It's another huge up and comer. That's one to look out for. Yeah, there's some backing behind. There's some passion behind that one. Well, just just goes to show that if you want to uh, make really good wine, you got to yeah. spend a whole lot of money. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> and you got to have a whole lot of passion. So yeah, that's John yeah. Skinner. John Skinner's an amazing individual. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And he works with Alain Sutra from Bordeaux. That's correct. Yeah. He used Bordeaux clones. Planted. Uh, did soil analysis. Planted everything in the right spot. So really, his first vintage out of the gate yeah. has been pretty good for young vines. Yeah, exactly. For that young of a winery, yeah. Wait till the vines get. Well, and he's making a, a they're a visionary winery. He's making a, a like a legacy project. The wines he's making now, especially with the land behind him, they're age-worthy wines, which you don't really see in BC. Yet. No. Yeah. Well, this is, the, you know, what you said, making a legacy project. This is the thing about what, what people don't understand in the wine business. This is not a three to five year business no, plan. No, This is a, a 25 to 50 year plan. And what you do now in terms of clonal selection, stuff in the... Stuff, uh, vineyard practices, a uh, clonal selection, you don't see the the fruit of it for really 10 to 15 years. So if you make a mistake all the, along those lines, you set yourself back 15 years. And the industry, if you want to uh, compare it as, you know, as a whole, 15 years. So it's really important to get that outside help that has had that experience for mm-hmm. centuries and to bring it over here so we can kickstart that learning curve. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, there's that old saying, there's not a man who could not retire comfortably if he could sell his experience at what it cost him. <laughs> there you go. So that that's really important. Uh, Soyuz La Rose. Soyuz La Rose, another big one. Yeah. 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 Bordeaux uh, winemaker, Bordeaux consultant, coming in and doing their thing. Uh, very good. Yeah. Uh, I like what, um, sorry, uh, yeah, La Friends is doing with yeah. their whites. Yeah. Yeah. Hidden gem of nickel up in there. Yeah. I just tasted with Matt. Did you? Yeah. And boy, the wines have improved. Awesome. A lot. Sweet. A lot. There you and go. it's the, what's the new owner's name? Um, what's his name? I forget. I forget too. Anyway, he's <laughs> done. If you've seen this, you've done a great job. Yeah. Matt, super passionate. Yeah. yeah very and much so. uh, and you know, I like what I I like what I see. The gamay, the the. Uh, Great, great, great wines. Yeah, well, and if you check out my site again, in Go the near Mike's. future, I've, yep. got, I've got some few nickel reviews coming up. Oh, yeah? Sitting there waiting to be on camera. So, cool. So we get to experience some nickel together. Uh, what's another one up and comer? Who should uh, our, our Let's viewers? Let's talk areas a little bit, man. Okay. Be, it's not just Okanagan anymore. We've got no. Fraser Valley wineries. We've got Vancouver Island wineries. We've got the Similkameen area, which is kind of southern Okanagan. Black We've Sage. Got Black Sage. Yeah, there's even stuff popping up out in, like, oh, what's the area? Near um, southwestern BC. Uh, what's it called? Anyway, but just all over Costin? BC. Costin. Costin area. Costin. Yeah, Costin. All these areas. We got so many <sighs> neat little places popping up. So here's what's ha- you know it's taken the French. Look at look at let's look at Napa Valley. Yeah. Napa Valley used to market themselves, generally Napa Valley. Mm-hmm. Now what you find. Now you gotta remember Napa, twenty six miles north to south, a couple miles east to yeah. west. Tiny little area. Tiny. Yeah. Now you're Spring Mountain, Diamond Mountain, Howl Mountain, Mayacamas, Childs Valley, mm-hmm. uh, Saint Helena, Oakville, Rutherford, Carneros. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, I said I said Spring Mountain. 
and so now you're getting all these little sub appellations yep. within this area that's been marketed as, as a whole. So British Columbia's next step yep. is drilling down in these specific regions and then another probably 20 years is going to take to figure out maybe 30 yeah. the specific sites. What really works. What, what yeah. works. Yeah. So we're still growing. Oh, totally. What's super cool with BC is our, our climate is so diverse yep. too within such a small pocket. So I, I personally don't know if we're ever going to have like a single varietal or a single thing like this. We've got the, the ability to do so many neat different little things. I think, I think uh, uh, first of all, whites mm -hmm. up... Uh, up in the northern part Absolutely. work work best. Yeah, well, you look at wild goose up there. Oh, wild goose is that St. Hubert's has done a good Saint, job. Yeah, everybody's doing it well. Tantalus, of course, can't Ooh, not mention Tantalus. Tantalus Riesling, Eric yeah. Savix. Yeah. Great, great, great Rieslings. Yeah. Um, and in the south, the you know reds, the whites. Uh, I'm not too not sure. So much. It's a bit warm there. A little bit warm. Yeah. A little bit warm. Yeah. So we're gonna see a, a, a big diversity, but I'd still like to see them. Focus in just a little That'll bit more. Nice. Still, I think there's about seventy varietals or oh, forty yeah, varietals. It's a little bit silly how many are growing, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I bet you the rest of the world kind of started like that too, trying to figure it out. So you know, there's a little producer <laughs> I bring in uh, in Burgundy, and he's in Von Romani, mm -hmm. and he has some Riesling planted, mm -hmm. and it was planted uh, after World War One. His great grandfather came out of the war, came back to Burgundy. He was a dye a physician. Uh, what to do, what to do, and he planted Riesling. He realized Riesling didn't work, and then yeah. he planted some, obviously, Chardonnay and Pinot, but he left, uh, Jean-Yves has left that Riesling in there as a legacy to his That's grandfather. Cool. Yeah. So, yes, all those areas had all those other things. They yeah. just have figured it out over, over <laughs> the years. They spent their time doing it. They put their due diligence in. Exactly, sure. but yeah. let's use that expertise mm -hmm. of what they yeah. learned over learned there over the centuries, bring it over here, and let's learn so we can, I don't want to say fast track it, but just learn a little bit quicker. Yeah, exactly. Open quicker. the textbook a bit and see what we can figure out. Absolutely. Mike? Sure. Cool. Pleasure, John. Always a awesome. pleasure to be by. Cool. Take care, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening.